So hello and welcome. We have been serving the nonprofit and construction in- industries since uh, 2009. We are a fully remote workforce. So uh, we know what we're talking about when it comes to uh, a healthy virtual work environment. We've been doing it uh, for years now. Um, we specialize in nonprofits and construction, like I said. So we're really, really excited to get to know um, some new organizations in the area. We're really glad that you can join us today, give you some new ways to use your virtual communication tools to build better connections in your organization. So what began as a fun way to communicate has turned into all work and no play. Uh, Who else has back-to-back meetings? Um, These are just some numbers uh, in uh, how many daily participants are in meetings, Um, but just a little note here on these stats. These are for both um, personal use and enterprise use, uh, but 75% of companies do use Teams actually, and we are um, a big proponent of Microsoft so we love to see um, how many people are using Teams, but we want to be able to use these for more than just work. About a year ago, we gave another webinar um, about uh, the core four functions of Teams. And if you'd like to know more about that, you can definitely reach out to us and we'd be happy to talk to you about the core four functions of teams and that was really just to get everybody working from home comfortably so now we want to take these platforms and take it really to the next level because since covid19 employees are feeling uh, more socially isolated definitely more emotionally exhausted and we're experiencing higher stress so nobody wants to um, be going through this especially when we're remote Um, we want to uh, kind of maintains well-being in in our work environments. And a happy stat here, 57% um, of employees feel happier when their boss expresses trust in them to work work remotely and remain productive. So we definitely want to be able to communicate to our teams that there is some, there is trust, there is, um, you know, good faith in in getting the work done and getting it done well. So we definitely want to be able to communicate that to our to our staff and to our partners. So let's talk about how we can create that healthy social system. There are three ingredients that we are going to um, go over today. And the first is mutual purpose. We want everybody to know their role in the mission and to feel like they do play an integral part in um, reaching that those goals. The next is connection. We want there to be that human connection. We get that gets lost in a virtual work environment where we're not bumping into people every day. We're not sitting down to lunch with our work BFFs. We want to make sure that there is that um, connection and open lines of communication. We know that if so, if we reach out, that somebody is going to be there. And that also goes along with the third ingredient, which is trust. We want there to be a level of trust, trust that everybody is working productively, trust that we all have our best interests in mind, that everybody um, is kind of on the same team. There's no backstabbing or anything like that. We want everybody to feel like um, we are in this together. So that feeling of trust. And with those three ingredients, we have the recipe for success. So now we're gonna go a little bit deeper into those three ingredients and we'll start with mutual purpose. We wanna meet with mutual purpose. And uh, let's talk about how to do just that. First, we can make meetings more effective by doing a little planning. The first thing that we want to do is before each meeting, we want to establish a central point of contact. We want to make sure that all file sharing, all conversations and updates are happening in one place. A lot of the time we use email and those threads get really long and confusing. The attachments kind of get lost down, uh, down the chain there. And we want to make sure that everything is accessible to everybody. So to establish that central point of contact, um, we use teams at F8, which we love. We create teams and group chats. It doesn't even have to be a team. It can just be a group chat in a, in a platform where you guys, um, exchange relevant files, um, and just update each other on where, where you are in each project. Then during the meetings, you want to use a lot of visual cues for improved engagement and clarity. Um, Working virtually, we have a lot of different kind of learning styles, communication styles. So we want to vary it up, make sure that we're including visual cues or just kind of engaging with um, our meeting participants to make sure that everybody remains on the same page. And lastly, we want to um, 
follow up and recap after the meeting in the, again, that chosen platform. We want to make sure that everybody knows the next steps. Everybody knows what was discussed, any big decisions that were made. Um, and definitely so everybody knows what their role is in a, um, accomplishing that common goal. Again, having that mutual purpose and just making sure that we are all on the same page moving forward after that meeting. So that's what you can do before, during, and after your meetings to make meetings more effective. Another thing that you can use is breakout rooms. And these are great for kind of breaking up the meeting and kind of getting getting voices heard and definitely maybe interacting with different people in your, in your organization or company that maybe you haven't spoken to before. So let's talk a little bit about how you can use break, uh, breakout rooms. We're gonna script the meeting for you. So the first thing you want to do is um, host a meeting with at least four other attendees. So breakout rooms don't work unless you have a host and four other people. Um, it will just remain gray. This is the case in teams, at least. If you try to break out into breakout rooms without, without enough people, it just won't work. So you definitely want to make sure there are enough people to break out into groups. And then once you're separated, um, the host will give you an objective, either to brainstorm um, or to problem solve. Um, everybody is going to um, have the same objective in each room to discuss. And then each group will assign a spokesperson and begin, to set, and begin their discussion. So these breakout rooms usually only last for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, they can go for as long or as short as you'd like. Um, but this is kind of that sweet spot, 10 to 15 minutes to kind of brainstorm, problem solve, um, talk it out with their team. And then lastly, after the breakout rooms, you definitely want to all get back together and kind of share um, what you guys discussed in those breakout rooms. And this will be a spokesperson led discussion. So whoever was assigned that um whoever you assigned as your spokesperson, excuse me, will kind of lead that discussion and let everybody know what conclusion you came to, what solution you have, or what new idea you've produced in those breakout rooms. And this is what a breakout room will look like in Teams, and this is from the host view. So you see on the right-hand side here, you see all the rooms. Um, you can open a room, you can jump in and just see what, what everybody's talking about if you just can't wait until everybody gets in the same room. But this, everybody will see this. Um, and this is what the breakout room will look like. You'll have um, your group in here. So that's what it looks like in Teams. Really, really fun stuff to do. And now we're gonna talk about some breakout room strategies. Um, breakout rooms are really great because in a larger kind of meeting, not everybody gets heard or maybe you feel like you um, are interrupting or that your voice, um, you're not really contributing, but you are. You definitely want to make sure that uh, everybody gets heard. And a good way to do this is to break out into smaller rooms and kind of discuss amongst yourselves and then bring those ideas back to the larger table. A helpful hint as well is to generate random uh, groups for more inclusion. So great for interdepartmental um, discussion, um, really great for um, maybe like ice breaking, maybe you're not talking with uh, people across departments or different floors, different locations. Um, we, it's a great way to kind of get people talking within your organization just to randomly select. And now these are some strategies for breakout rooms. So, and this is kind of the flow of a, of a meeting. You can start or, um, or incorporate these strategies uh, throughout the meeting. So the first one that we're going to go over is a round, rob round robin style uh, breakout room. And this is great for brainstorming and problem solving, uh, creative thought or innovation. So how this happens is that a host will create an e-document and distribute to all of the breakout room groups the same document. Each group gets one. Then each group will propose a new idea or a solution to the problem. And then once they've proposed that idea, they will then pass that document off to another group. So now each group has a different group's um, solution or new idea. And now that group can objectively pose pros and cons to that new idea or that solution. And then at the end of that discussion, everybody can get back in the same room and talk about the idea that was proposed and kind of the breakdown of um, the pros and cons of that solution. So that's a fun way of kind of getting to know where everybody's at um, and uh, talk about next steps. Next is the one, two, four, all. And this is great for scalable focus. So um, you start with one 
person um, just in the breakout room by themselves. And this is a little bit of time for solitary reflection. And then each person in their solitary room will be joined into pairs. So now each breakout room will have two people in it and they'll discuss what um, what they were reflecting on in that time by themselves. And so now each breakout room of two will join together and then it will be a breakout room of four. So then those four will talk about uh, their ideas. And then after those groups of four, we'll all be joined again into the larger meeting room. And again, you definitely want to assign a spokesperson for your group and you'll talk about your ideas from there. And the last is share pairs, and this is hyper-focused. This is really just like a quick discussion kind of thing um, with, a, with a team member. And um, this is, and in these share pairs, you'll identify your action steps, and then you can get into a media motion. As soon as that um, meeting is over, you can kind of jump right into your work with um, super hyper-focused. You know exactly what you want to do and get it done. So that's a great way to kind of just talk it through with a teammate really quick, and you guys kind of know where you are in the project and what somebody else is going to be doing and just really focus on your task. So those are the breakout room strategies. Um, hope you use them. They're really a lot of fun to do. And then of course we want to end with engagement. We want to end on a positive note. We want everybody to leave the meeting feeling um, kind of charged up, ready to go. And of course in a good mood. So the first thing that you can do is um, you know, use your time wisely. Don't feel like you have to take up the entire meeting time. If you booked maybe 30 minutes for a meeting time and you notice that at like 15, 20 minutes, all questions were answered, the conversation's kind of winding down a little bit, you see that everybody's ready to go, end the meeting. There's no reason to keep everybody there longer than you need to. You definitely want to recap big decisions and talking points so everybody is super clear on what, every, what you guys discussed. You definitely want to carve out time so that, again, everybody knows um, the next steps, what you'll be talking about next time you meet, and what everybody is going to be doing between that time, between now and then, what um, everybody's role is. Definitely take time to hold a Q&A to clarify any questions that people have, um, maybe what their role is, um, or what you'll be talking about next. Just take a few minutes to, to go over that. And then, if you can, end the meeting maybe five minutes early to give people a chance to decompress. A lot of us are in marathon meetings all day, hanging up one call and taking another. Uh, we don't even get up and go get a drink of water. So if you know that you have a few minutes between meetings, just giving people that little rest between meetings is, is nice. Um, I know because we are all working remotely, we kind of just schedule meetings back to back so we don't have to go anywhere. But it's nice to give people a chance to get a little break in the day um, between meetings. The next secret ingredient that we are going to talk about is connection. So human connection in your virtual environment, it's really vital for your mission to um, get that human connection back in your virtual workplace. And we can do this um, First, by managing and maintaining the well-being in the workplace, as we've kind of fused our work and um, home life as we're working from home or working remotely, uh, we forget to kind of shut down at the end of the day or to really focus in on our work, um, at least uh, giving just giving ourselves time to really focus in on a task. So the first thing that you can do is maintain healthy boundaries by blocking out daily focus times. And this is time where you're going to really focus in on a task. You're not going to, you know, take any calls or get up to do your laundry. You're really going to block out that time to really focus on your, on your work, true work time. The next thing that you can do to even further disconnect is to set quiet hours on your mobile device and to mute notifications. Um, we definitely do that as eight week on Teams. You just kind of turn on the do, do not disturb and that lets everybody know, you know, that they're either um, working, uh, you know, taking that focus time for themselves or that they just need time to not be interrupted. So when we do respect those, um, cues and teams. So that's a great way to build healthy boundaries as well. But it's not all about work. You definitely want to just check in regularly and keep conversations casual and fun in these in these platforms. You just want to check in and say, hey, what's going on? How are you? Um, maybe you people don't want to reach out and ask for help. You can 
make yourself available and ask if there's anything that they need help with or review. Um, it, since you're not bumping into people, you don't really get to say, hey, I have something for you to check out. So this is a great way for you to kind of just reach out to them and see if there's anything that you can help out with and just maybe check in on them, see how they're doing. If anything is new, it's a, a great way to do that. And you can also boost morale by communicating your pre appreciation with the praise tool. I know a lot of different platforms have different ways of doing this. In Microsoft Teams, they have the praise tool, which is really nice. Um, they have some uh, preloaded badges in there that you can give like thank yous or great work. Um, inclusion, there's an inclusion one in there. And uh, it's a great way, you know, you don't really get to give like cards or anything anymore. So it's a great way to just show your appreciation and let them know that you do, that you are acknowledging their hard work. So that's a great way to kind of just boost morale in the workplace virtual workplace. Also, did you know that sharing a funny or embarrassing story of yourself can help boost brainstorming by 26%? So you definitely want to have a place where you can just, um, uh, a casual place to check in, just a place where you can uh, maybe share a funny picture of your kid or your pet. Let uh, let somebody let everybody know that there's um, an activity or something happening this weekend outdoors that you can uh, meet up at. Uh, definitely a place where you can just check in with people and a great place to do this is a virtual water cooler. And this is an online space that can be as big or as small as you want. Um, that encourages connection outside of a structured meeting. So this could be a specific place, like a team in Microsoft Teams, a channel, um, or just a group chat even that you open up with everybody in. And this could be organized by um, uh, department. It could be your whole organization, depending on how big or small you guys are. Um, it could be a floor, maybe people that you know, um, used to work closely together in, in the physical office, or it could be a virtual happy hour, just a shared set of traditions um, where everybody gets together and really just uh, hangs out, no work involved, just a place to kind of, you know, leave work at the door and just talk for a minute like people. So this uh, has a few benefits. And the first is to get comfortable communicating with people you may not have met yet across digital channels. So there's been a lot of new hires. Um, we are continuing to grow despite despite the challenges of COVID-19. Um, we've seen a lot of growth in our non nonprofit partners, which is really exciting. So. Um, we definitely want to be able to get to know people that we have in, in person. And this is definitely a place to meet those people and just get to know their areas of expertise or even their special interests um, in this just kind of relaxed and casual environment. And lastly, this is a really, really great way to make everybody feel like a part of the team, no matter where they work. There's been a lot of relocating, a lot of, um, I'm sorry, a lot of different, um, I'm sorry, different groups being formed. And this is a great way to just have a common place where you can just get together and talk casually um, about something other than work. Um, so now I just want to, this is a team screen. If you don't have teams, this is what it looks like. Um, but there's, and these functions are available in a lot of different platforms, but this is what it looks like in teams. Um, the first thing that we can do is react to messages. And we do this a lot um, just to let people know that we got it, we're ready to go, it's laugh, whatever. You can hover over the message, um, message with your mouse and then click the reaction that you'd like to give and then it will show up in the message. So that's a fun little thing that you can do. And also this bar at the bottom has a few different um, fun things to do as well. The, um, the first is emojis, gifs, and stickers. And then we also have the praise tool over here. And um, this is really, really great. Once again, these are the badges that are available in here. Um, and then once you select one, you can put a little message in. We've chosen thank you. So you wanna let them know um, what you're thanking them for, a little note showing your appreciation. You can preview it and then send it off and it will sh uh, show up just like an instant message. So that's a really great way to just show appreciation um, virtually. Um, and the last thing that we're going to go over is trust. So you want to build this visible, visible trust while virtual. Um, and to build that trust, you have to remain visible. When you send a message, you want to know that the other person in the end will see it and is there. Um, and so one thing that you can do is to use your IM and chat features to keep conversations direct and avoid that 
um, email overload. I know that um, the saying used to be that this meeting could have been an email, but now it's kind of like this email could have been just a chat. It could have just been checking in. So definitely use that chat feature instead of email just to pop in. And also it could help with file sharing to keep it in a uh, central location. Um, next, you definitely want to uh, have a channel or a group chat for updates or recaps. I'm um, definitely file sharing once again in that common location. It's really, really easy, easy to do. And then just checking in with chat or a pop by in your virtual office. You can't really poke your head into anybody's office anymore. So this is a great way to just say, hey, do you need help with anything? Once again, just kind of reaching out, letting them know that you're there, um, that you're here to help them. And also just to, you know, check in and make sure that everything's going all right, that they're okay over there on the other end. You can also change your view in these virtual platforms, which is great. Um, the first one is uh, together mode or Zoom immersive scenes. And this will make it look like you're all in the same room. It's kind of like a brain game. It'll make you look like you're all together. Uh, and that's really, really a fun thing to make it uh, kind of a common space. Again, you're not really in a conference room or anything together anymore. So it's really fun to see everybody in the same space after all this time again. Um, also, again, the, these whiteboard features um, for visual cues are really, really great for encouraging different types of participation. Um, we have a lot of different um, learning and communication um, uh, techniques or preferences, um, especially when we're virtual that we can that we can cater to with these features like the whiteboard feature, just kind of drawing and giving everybody that nice visual. And the last thing is themed meetings where everybody changes their background to something fun. It could be a scene from their favorite movie, even their favorite color, or maybe their favorite vacation destination when we love to all be somewhere on a tropical island. <laughs> um, but that's just a fun way to kind of get into a meeting, have a quick little laugh before you get into business. Um, another thing that we want to just encourage is updating your profile pictures on your um, virtual platforms. If you've grown a beard, if you've changed your hair, um, if you've gained the COVID-19 or maybe you lost it, which is also great. Um, definitely just letting people know what you look like. And this is definitely, again, speaking to people who maybe you haven't met yet. So um, definitely giving a face to whoever's on the other end is always a great way of building that human connection once again. And then you want to get involved. One of my mentors always used to call these people silent partners, people who are definitely engaged in listening, but don't really have too much to say. You can let people know that you are there listening and um, invest in what they're saying. You can use live reactions during meetings, just giving a, um, a thumbs up or a laughing emoji in the chat. Um, you can encourage attendees to raise their hands so that they don't feel the pressure to talk to you. Um, just, you know, by, uh, uh, by a show of hands, who has ever um, been to Florida? And you can just have people raise their hands. Um, that way you don't have to pressure people into talking who may be uncomfortable. Um, using the chat feature to interject. This is a really, really great way to um, kind of be heard without interrupting the flow of the meeting. Um, if maybe you notice the mistake in whatever the presenter is saying, um, to keep everybody on the same page, you can say, hey, this is actually on page six of the document, not on page three. Um, just turn there and this kind of keeps the presenter um, on a roll. You don't have to to interrupt them and keeps everybody on the same page, literally and figuratively. And then you can always call in more members of the team if you feel like you need to. I know that um, in the beginning, it was really just, you know, the heads of the department or the key members of the team kind of meeting. But now we have all of these platforms which allow for many, many more people to join in. So, you know, take advantage of those features and really bring in anybody who needs, um, who you may feel may benefit from being in that meeting, um, either to be heard or to generate some new ideas. Um, it can't hurt. So we want to close out with um, with letting you know the um, cost of, of what it of what this kind of disengagement looks like. Seventy percent of American workers are not reaching their full potential with 52 percent of them admitting to doing the bare minimum and this is just kind of getting the work done I'm not really passionate about their work just kind of putting out what's been asked of them without really going that extra mile and 18 percent admit that they are no longer invested in the mission so this is like no motivation to get the to get the work done they could care less about um 
about the mission anymore. They don't feel invested in it. And um, this could even go as far as sabotaging the mission, just kind of working completely against what the mutual purpose is. They don't feel a part of that mutual purpose. And this costs $450 to $550 billion lost in productivity per year. And we definitely don't want our partners to be a part of that number, to be a part of the statistic. We want to make sure that everybody is engaged, um, is feeling healthy in their virtual work environment, both um, physically, of course, given the, given the circumstances, but also mentally healthy. We want everybody to be happy with their work environment. Um, F8 has been remote for fully remote for 12 years, if you can believe so. We know a little bit about working um, virtually in and keeping it you know fun and definitely making sure that all of us are, are um are in on the mutual purpose um, of our mission that there is that trust and there is that connection across virtual platforms so we definitely want to encourage our partners to and um hopefully our future partners to use this new skill set to build a virtually inclusive work environment um and to and to keep everybody working um happily and that everybody's well-being is um is part of uh, of that environment to um, have a positive work environment. We are in MWBE proudly providing technology support to your community since 2009. And um, hopefully we'll be hearing from you soon. If you have any questions, you can um, email us at webinar at f8consulting.com. And we'll be happy to assist you in any way that we possibly can. Once again, it was great to meet you today. I'm really excited to see you here. And hopefully we'll be talking again soon. So until then, we hope you stay safe, be well, and we hope that you are now virtually inclusive. And with that, um, I'm going to wrap this up and end it. So have a great day, stay safe, and bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.